Hi, Dr. Biology here. This video is about how a respirometer works and also helping you improve exam technique. So this is part five of my res A-level respiration series of videos. And the reason I'm talking about respirometer is that um, it's quite a good question to ask in terms of applying your knowledge of respiration, but also uh, showing your understanding of apparatus and techniques. It's also, uh, doing the experiment is quite difficult, so many centres wouldn't probably do this uh, with you as students. They might demo it, um, but uh, it's quite difficult to set up. So I thought it'd be useful just to go through the basics of how it all works and then look at some exam questions to help you. Respirometers come in different uh, types and different sizes, all the way from uh, one uh, tube to a tube that is large as a room. Um, and it allows the measurement of changes in gas volumes as organisms respire in a sealed chamber. So you can see, in this case, the sealed chamber here is in B. And in B, we have um, uh, some seeds that are germinating. As these organisms respire, um, so in the case of the seeds, they're going to uh, consume oxygen and they're going to produce CO2. That CO2 is absorbed by the potassium hydroxide. And the volume of gas in the tube will fall and it reduces the pressure and it allows the liquid in the capillary tube to be pushed towards tube B in this case. So you can see it would move whoop, it would move that away. It's not working, there you go, that away. As you can see there is a syringe, okay, and um, basically what you're taking is measurements over time uh, by using the syringe to return the liquid to its original position and then recording the change in volume in the um, in the tube, in the it's called a manometer tube or capillary U-tube. So it's very important that this is a sealed system um, because you just want to measure the uptake of oxygen by the respiring um, peas or beans or whatever, you, or the seeds or whatever you're using. Um, and you've got to eliminate volume changes that can cause, be caused by anything other than the uptake of oxygen. So with this type of apparatus, you could study uh, small invertebrates, um, such as wood lice. Um, now, if you're going to do it with animals, you need to be very careful. And in fact, you probably, well, you wouldn't use potassium hydroxide as it's, as it's a liquid and, it could, and it's also quite toxic. So with small invertebrates, you use soda lime instead. There we go. Now, if we look at tube A, obviously there's no germinating seeds in it, but there is more potassium hydroxide in this tube, and that's just to equal the volume of the seeds in the other tube. So you're, you're keeping things the same. So um, the only reason, the only thing that could be moving the coloured uh, oil that way doesn't seem to like that arrow, then wait a second, there you go, that way, it's going to be pressure changes in tube B, so CO2 going into potassium hydroxide and obviously the O2 being uh, used in aerobic respiration by the seeds. So over a specific amount of time you can determine um, the rate of oxygen uptake. Um, and we'll talk about how you would calculate that. So the um, type of question they might ask, they might give you some data like they have here and then they'll ask you to work out um, the diameter, well it's telling you the diameter of the capillary tube was two millimeters, okay, and it says calculate the volume of oxygen used by barley Seeds in millimetres cubed per minute per gram. So, um, luckily, they wouldn't normally, I'll be honest, they wouldn't show you that. 
that was just um, just to show you how to do it really but uh, so the first thing is we need to uh, look at the distance moved so it has a distance moved in 30 seconds so this is the distance moved in the manometer in the uh, measuring tube so if you remember the tube the y-shaped tube so how much it moved over time with barley seeds now it wants you to work it out per minute but what we're going to do first of all is work out the volume of gas used um, in 30 seconds so you'd be expected to know um, the volume of a cylinder which is pi r squared times the height so that's the volume of a cylinder so in this case it would be pi times 1 because it r squared the sorry the diameter is 2 millimeters radius is 1 so squared 1 times 1 is 1 times the distance the that it moved the height that it moved which is 300 so that will give us 942 millimeters cubed in 30 seconds per 150 grams so it's not per gram it's per 150 grams so that's the first calculation okay so you find it per minute you're going to times it by two because that's after 30 seconds so that gives you 1884 millimeters cubed uh, per minute per 150 grams okay so we now need to work out um, what it is in grams so it'd be 1884 divided by 150 and that should give you 12.6 millimeters cubed per minute per gram there we go and it's as simple as that so you obviously you know you, you should know the volume of a cylinder that's GCSE if you don't then I probably would find would uh, know what it is because they might ask you to work out the um, oxygen uptake so respirometers can be used in different kind of settings so uh, particularly a good way of doing it is looking at gas change um, in for example germinating seeds or even small organisms um, at different temperatures because obviously temperature affects the rate of oxygen uptake and also affects how quickly enzymes are working so it's quite a popular one so here's a setup very complicated setup as you can see but uh, the the respirometer is placed in a um, water bath well the the actual scale is outside the water bath but the tubes are inside the water bath and obviously you can control the temperature you would be checking the thermometer regularly um, and recording the temperature so here's a graph of some results I made earlier that's a joke, I didn't. Um, so it's showing the distance of the movement of the fluid uh, moved by in the manometer, okay, in millimetres, and it's got the time in seconds. And it's comparing three temperatures, 20, 30, and 50. Now, here's a little tip. Um, if you're simply comparing the rates of respiration at different temperatures then you don't need to convert the distance moved by the manometer fluid to a volume. You could just plot the distance moved on the y-axis of your graph and time on the x-axis and then you will get um, a gradient. Now they might ask you to work out the gradient of the slope so remember it's the change in, let me guess, do, 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 do. That was it. The change in the distance. So change in Y divided by change in X. So then you'll be able to work out the gradient of the, the line. 
So here's some examples. So at 50 degrees C, you can see the fluid traveled 47 millimeters in 50 seconds. Okay, and then uh, you can work out the actual distance in millimeters per second. Okay, and you can see that it's traveled further. The rate of respiration is faster at 50 than it is at 30, and 30 is faster than 20. Let's have a look at some exam questions on um, respirometers and respiration. These are quite applied questions. So first, firstly, a student investigated the rate of gas exchange um, in aerobically respiring seas using the apparatus shown in the diagram. So in experiment one, she put potassium hydroxide solution in the beaker, where, uh, whereas in experiment two, she put water in the beaker. So that's the only thing that was changed and they've got a scale in the manometer, they've got the germinating seeds, the sealed unit. Let's have a look at the question. So question A, it says both experiments were carried out at the same temperature and it wants an explanation and it's for two marks. So the key thing here is about temperature because if temperature is not kept the same, what will it affect? So they were carried because otherwise it will affect enzymes. So you could talk about respiration involves enzymes. That would give you two marks or it affects respiration. Um, you can't just say um, to control at the uh, to control as a, uh, as a control variable. You've got to be specific in your answer. Or you could say it affects the volume or the pressure of the gases um, or it affects the readings. Um, so just be careful though, it does say mark point four can only be awarded if mark point three is being credited. So you can't just say affects readings, you wouldn't get the mark, you would have to say affects volume. But I mean in terms of temperature, I'd be thinking about well what does temperature affect? It does affect respiration involves enzymes and that would be affected. So 1B, it says the level of the coloured liquid in the right-hand side of the manometer tube went down during experiment 1. Explain why. And that's three marks. So if you remember, um, obviously the um, seeds are going to be um, respiring. So oxygen is going to be taken up. So oxygen is going in. It's taken up by the seeds. It's nice and simple. And we know the CO2 is going to be absorbed by the potassium hydroxide. And therefore, that explains why there's a decrease in volume and pressure. So therefore, it went down. But you don't have to repeat that it went down, because that will just be repeating the stem of the question. Okay, there we go. So that's just testing you know how the respir respirometer is going to work. Okay, they'll then show you some results from both experiments and it talks about the fall in volume of the coloured liquid in the right hand side uh, between potassium hydroxide and water. It says calculate the volume of carbon dioxide produced during experiment one. Well, luckily, uh, they measured the actual scale is in centimetres cubed, so it's, it's quite simple. You just do five, uh, five centimetres cubed minus the one, OK? So that would mean that four centimetres cubed is produced. So 1C, the student repeated the experiment using seeds which were respiring anaerobically. What would happen to the level of coloured liquid in the right-hand side of the manometer? It says, explain your answer. It's for two marks. Now, it's testing your knowledge that anaerobic respiration is um, without oxygen. So if it was anaerobic, there'd be no oxygen uptake. Um, and therefore, if there's no oxygen uptake, um, it would remain the same. So there we go. Um, it would remain the same um, because basically um, no oxygen is being taken up and it's not being used.
So on to question two. So you've already seen this diagram before. I've used it before earlier in the video. And it's used for measuring the rate of respiration. And the first question asks, for the first 10 minutes, the tap attached to A, okay, was left open and the syringe from tube B was removed. It says, suggest three reasons why the apparatus was left for 10 minutes. Okay, so if you are leaving uh, tube A open, you're leaving it open to the atmosphere, um, and therefore um, you are allowing um, several things to happen. Uh, you're allowing the um, expansion or pressure changes in the apparatus to settle down. Um, you want to reach uh, an equilibrium, so e uh, an equilibrium is reached. Um, and thirdly, uh, you just want the seeds to be um, respiring at a stable rate so that they are um, have been left for a while um, without any changes. Um, quite a good word there is equilibrate. Um, they, they use that word quite a lot in terms of uh, making sure that the equipment is kind of uh, ready to go. So you're just making sure all the conditions are correct before you then seal up the device. And then 2B it says suggest and explain. So suggest and explain why the chosen temperature was 20 degrees C. So again, you should know in respiration, enzymes are very important. And um, for this type of seed, it might be the optimum temperature. So key word there is optimum. So optimum temperature uh, for enzymes involved in respiration. They then show you some results and it says after 10 minutes the tap attached to tube A was closed and then the syringe was attached to the tube B. So every minute you can see there the syringe plunger was moved until the levels in the YouTube were the same. The reading on the syringe volume scale was then recorded so the recording on a, on a um, syringe rather than in the manometer. Okay and you can see over time what happens to the data you can see there's a decrease in the volume. So C, and it says during the experiment, the coloured liquid in the tubing moved towards tube B. Explain, again, exactly the same question as the previous question in the fact that O2 is taken up. So this comes up time and time again. Um, oxygen is taken up, CO2 is uh, given out and it's absorbed by the KOH. For some reason earlier I put POH, I don't really know why. Whoops. KOH. And therefore the volume or the pressure decreases. There we go. Okay, and then... D, it says the mass of the seed was 1.6 grams. Use the information in the table to calculate the rate of oxygen consumption in centimetres cubed per gram per hour by the seeds. Okay, so uh, you've got the information um, and it shows you the time in minutes. Okay, so you've got 10 minutes. So in 10 minutes, it goes from 0 0.84 to 0 0.58. So it's very simple, 0.84 minus 0.58 and that will give us 0.26 in 10 minutes and that's luckily it's in centimeters cubed so um, to get the hour you times it by 6 so that'll give us 1.56 And then we need to look at per gram. So it's uh, per gram, so you're going to divide that by 1.6. And that gives you the answer of 0.975. And that would be centimetres cubed per gram per hour. On to the final question, and it says the diagram shows apparatus used to measure the oxygen uptake of snails that live on the seashore. 
Mm. And the apparatus was kept at a constant temperature. So snails in there, they've actually not drawn some snails. Um, potassium hydroxide and a strip of filter paper. And then you've got the manometer. Doesn't tell you the scale. You don't know what the scale is. Um, so let's have a look at the questions. So question A, I explain the purpose of the strip of filter paper in the potassium hydroxide. Well, that's a new one. Uh, we haven't discussed that. Well, um, if you think about it, carbon dioxide is going to be um, released and you want as much of it to be absorbed into the potassium hydroxide. So the filter paper uh, will have potassium hydroxide solution on it. But what you're doing is you're increasing the surface area for carbon dioxide absorption. And it's as simple as that. Again, the same question as before, the level of liquid in the right hand side of the manometer, uh, manometer in this case went down during the experiment. Explain why. Well, we should know that. Oxygen is used. CO2 is absorbed by the potassium hydroxide. Get that right. KOH. Well done. So decrease in volume or pressure. So three questions all with the same style of question. Now question three, again about calculations, so what measurements are needed, so you don't have to calculate it, you just need to say what is needed to calculate the rate of oxygen uptake by the snails in millimetres cubed per gram per hour. So we are going to need to know the change uh, the, in the movement of the liquid, so change of level of the liquid. We're going to need to know the diameter of the tube, or the bore of the tube, you can say, but I'm going to say diameter of the tube. You'll also need to take into account the mass of the snail. And also you could mention as well, uh, you need to know what time interval as well. So for example, in the previous uh, question, it had a time interval of 10 minutes. So whatever you got, you would times it by 6 to get it to per hour. Okay, so there are the typed answers for that question. Okay, on to B. Now this is quite interesting because they're showing some use of um, what looks like uh, standard deviation. Yeah, uh, so it says two experiments. Uh, it says experiment one, oxygen uptake of batches of 10 snails kept in moist air was measured at temperatures between 5 and 35 and then it was repeated but with batches of 10 seashore snails covered by aerated seawater okay so one in moist air one in aerated seawater so both have uh, sources of oxygen and they repeat it several times and the means and standard deviations calculated and the results are shown in the table and the values given are means plus or minus one standard deviation. So I always have a look at the data so you can see temperature increases, oxygen uptake in the air and in the seawater. So um, we need to look at what's happening. Well 5 to 15, very little change in oxygen uptake. Again, a small change in seawater. So there's, there's little effect of temperature between 5 and 15, I would say. And Okay, so then we look at oxygen uptake from 20 to, to well, for air, you can see it increases up to 25 as a maximum, and then it decreases, all right? Whereas in uh, seawater, the uptake increases up to 30 degrees, and then it decreases. However, you can see there's lower uptake in seawater compared to air. Now you could, in the exam, you could just write those as little notes on the side. There's nothing to stop you highlighting the question. The examiner won't see the question, and even if they do, it doesn't matter if you have written all over it, that's fine. So, uh, the first one asks one similarity and one difference. Notice it's in bold, so that don't give more than one. 
uh, between the pattern of mean oxygen uptake of the snails kept in moist air and those covered by seawater. So I think I pretty much covered it when I was looking at the data just a minute ago. So, yep, both show little effect of temperature between 5 and 15 degrees C. So if you think the command word is describe, when it says describe, use the data that they've given you. So specify the temperature. OK, so that is a similarity. And then at 20 degrees C and above, it's less when the snails are kept in seawater because you're comparing seawater with moist air. The final question, explain. So give a biological reason uh, why valid conclusions cannot be drawn about the trends at temperatures of 25 degrees C or above. OK, so when we're talking about trends and validity, we're talking about the particular statistical test, although SDs aren't statistical, but uh, standard deviation. So we need to look at the standard deviation. OK, so here's the data and you can see the temperatures uh, above 25 degrees C, well, of, and above uh, for both uh, in air and in water. And you can see that pretty much the issue is that the standard deviations are pretty high. So if they're high, then that will mean it is unreliable. So you can see, yep, standard deviations are high. That means it's unreliable. You could also say um, other, other answers might be acceptable as well about that 25 degrees C is out of the normal range of a snail that lives in seawater in the UK. Um, and it's not enough temperature readings as well. You could mention that, isn't it? You would need to look at smaller intervals. Right, so... I hope you have found that useful. Um, this is part five. My my next video, part six, is going to be uh, looking at exam questions for aerobic and anaerobic respiration. So um, the main thing is, if respirometers come up in the exam, you're sorted. So that's really good. Right. Okay. I gotta go. I'll see you soon.